you everybody who stuck around. Um, one of the things that I'm struck by as we're in the entering the third day of the festival is sort of a reminder of what film festivals and films can do and that they remind us of our humanity and our role in humanity. And I was sort of trying to think about combinations, why certain films are brought together. And I think that one of the things that your film did so well and by the way, it was so nice to see on a big screen. <laughs> I, I watched it on my computer about a week ago, and up here it just gave me such heart. <laughs> um, but my sense is, is that your film really does such a wonderful job at it, and I'd just love to hear some story about how this came to be. <laughs> yeah, um, I had the had some ideas floating around for this film for quite a while, like the idea of just like, is her mic working? Okay. No. <laughs> no. No. No, she needs to hold it closer to her mouth. Oh, closer, sorry. <laughs> I had some ideas for this film floating around for quite a while, like the idea of like finding like a journal uh, of someone's and kind of like piecing through their life, kind of like going through someone's like a junk drawer and kind of um, turning like a stranger into like a natural person. So I kind of like the idea of like finding someone's like humanity, as you said, um, through like their stuff and through like their writings particularly. It was a really nice tool that you used to, to, to bring that, you know, to some sort of fruition. So the other thing that I was struck by as I was thinking about the combination of these two films is that this whole festival is really dedicated to showing films um, by first and second time filmmakers. So could you tell us a little bit about how this film came to life in, the, in, in your world of being a filmmaker or developing as a filmmaker? Uh, how did this film start? Yeah, I studied abroad my first semester of my junior year of college. Um, I just graduated from Champlain. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I stayed abroad in Dublin at their satellite campus over there. Um, and I had made a few kind of like school projects at Champlain before, but this is, I think of this as like my first real film. Um, so I wrote it while I was there. And it's funny because I wrote it kind of late <laughs> in the school year, and a lot of my classmates would always write stuff super early. Um, but I think it kind of forced me to put a lot of like heart into it to okay, get it in there fast. Um, and yeah, I finished writing it in September, and then we shot it in November, and it was freezing, <laughs> actually. Um, and then I put together like a rough cut for December, and then I've been editing it, and it's got kind of delayed because of the pandemic, but um, it's finally finished, and I'm <laughs> happy to see all the big screen. So were you working with classmates from Champlain um, to, to make this, or was it a crew in Dublin? We sort of had a camaraderie with your, your classmates, is that how it Right, so I went with about like five other, four or five other film majors uh, in my class to Dublin, and they were all um, on my crew. They all helped each other out there. Uh -huh. um, so as a, as a first time filmmaker or first big film big time filmmaker, what was the most uh, complicated thing about this film, or what was the most difficult thing about making this film? Ah, um, that's a good question. I always said one of the most difficult things was actually writing it because again I had the idea for like the journal entries for quite a while, but it was hard to kind of piece together what would actually be in the journals. I kind of wanted each journal entry to be in like a specific place around the city. Um, and yeah, Dublin's a much bigger place than Burlington or Middlebury, so it was kind of hard to like pick and choose like little places that would mean something to each entry. I think that's really interesting that you talk about just coming up with the story as being the most difficult thing. And I, I think that's wonderful because ultimately, again, films are successful because of their stories. Um, I'm wondering if anybody out here has a question that you might like to ask Evelyn. And if you could wait for the microphone to get up to you, I think there's uh, somebody way, way up there. 
Um, that would be great so that everybody can hear. I don't know if this is appropriate at this time, but I'm wondering, can subtitles be added to this film at this point, or is it too late? I've actually thought about it quite a bit, because um, I do have the subtitles in there a little bit, and I've been kind of toying with the idea, so I might... I would really recommend it, because I could not understand the thing the girl said, which is really disappointing, because I thought it was such an original, interesting film. And often couldn't understand what the voice said. I don't know if it's being old and wearing hearing aids and other people on the same issue. And I thought, well, subtitles would really have helped. No, I don't blame you. The accent gets. Um... I don't even think it was accent. They spoke so fast. Uh, they need to uh, either speak slower or slowly if you're getting people to narrate. That's so funny you say that, though, because when I went to. Dublin, you have to get used to how fast a lot of Irish people talk. Does anybody else out here have a question that you'd like to ask? And if you could wait for the microphone. Hold on, just please. I don't even know. How many shoot days? I think we did. The first day was all in that park, and then the second day um, we went all around the city to all those other little locations. That was a two day shoot? Yeah, I like to. Shoot things as quickly as possible. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And, <laughs> I mean, for, for any of us who have tried to shoot something, that, what that suggests to me is that you had an incredible sense of organization and um, you knew what you were doing. Um, thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and it, sh it, it shows. Um, thank you for that question that, that elicited something that I didn't anticipate. <laughs> There's another question. <laughs> I had a question. I wasn't quite clear on why you made the, the boy be mute. Uh, would it, I mean, what did it add to the story? Because it could have been a, a speaking person. And how did you learn sign language in two months if you had this accident or whatever made you be mute? Yeah, I've been uh, learning sign language um, at like the Parks and Rec Department at Burlington for it's like three or four years now, and I've always wanted to like kind of incorporate it in something that I made because I feel like it's not very well known. Obviously, it's like people know the language, but I feel like it needs more like exposure, and I wish more people knew it. Um, so I really wanted to do something doing that, but I wanted him uh, to be able to hear her. So I wanted to, um, and I also wanted to bring to light like the concept of not being able to like kind of express yourself well and kind of feeling alone and finding a friend kind of through that. Thank you. Any other questions? I just had one more question. So as a recent college graduate and as the director producer of a film, do you have plans to make more films? Where do you see yourself going at this point? Yeah, so I just finished my senior year at Champlain, and I made another short film at the same life uh, this past year that's kind of being finished up right now, and I'm hoping to submit that to festivals, and hopefully that'll be here next year. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, I hope it comes here too, and I hope that this film gets seen uh, wider. And I love the way it all fit together with, with both films. So I invite you, if you have any more questions for Evelyn, to touch base with her down here or outside and really appreciate uh, uh, you sticking around and, and uh, watching the film and listening to this. Listening to Thank you, everyone.